Hello, everybody. Hello, hello from boiling hot. Can I emphasize that? <laughs> boiling hot South Australia. <laughs> and Sydney. Uh, and Sydney. Oh, it's hot there too, Matt. Oh, yeah. Very. <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome, everybody, as you join. And a, a huge um, hello and greetings from very hot Sydney and South Australia. <laughs> As you jump on, um, please say hi. Let us know that you can hear us okay. You can see us all right. And just as usual, going to jump on and just make sure that this is, yeah, no, okay. It's uh, just change it to public because for some reason it always gets set on um, private for some reason. Okay, so yeah, guys, as you jump on, say hi. Hello, hello. So good to see everybody. Oh, so good to see everyone. Washington State, Minnesota, Texas, oh, California. <laughs> wow, look at this. Hello, hello. So good to see everybody. All right, I'm just, if I just take a sec um, to find this on my page, I think. Oh, sorry, everybody. Just give me one second. I think we're on. Yes. Okay. All right. I think we're on public, so I think we're good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, hi. Oh, Lisa, praise God. That blesses my heart. The prophetic voice of God. It's been a while since uh, I, I wrote that book, so I'm glad that that's really blessing you. Praise God. Well, I'm very excited about this chat today. I know I, I had a bit of a giggle because uh, when I posted the graphic for this Facebook Live, um, I did see, I think it was maybe one or two people went, wilderness, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to, I want to say it's going to be a really, um, a time of encouragement. Uh, I believe it's going to be a time where the Holy Spirit's going to minister to you and Matt and I are just going to uh, unpack some things but before um, I introduce my awesome guest here who I know most of you are very familiar with um, I just want to say you know in this broadcast really um, just right now just position yourself in that place of just the stillness and the, and the quiet place before the Lord just to to really open your heart to hear what the Holy Spirit is going to say um, because I will tell you in a minute why we're doing this broadcast, but uh, I really believe that the Holy Spirit's going to minister to you uh, deeply. So I just wanted to encourage you to be in that position right now. So without further ado, Matt, welcome, welcome. As always, thanks for jumping on with me. That's my pleasure, Lana. And as always, it's just such a beautiful thing for you to trust me in these moments. And uh, I just want to say thank you and just for what's about to be, I think um, the things that have been working through your heart have been so powerful for the kingdom of God. And it's just such a joy to partner with you in what you're releasing at the moment. Thanks, Matt. It's such a joy. As I say all the time, whenever we jump on together, like, you know, I could sit with you for like hours and just, you know, just the way the Holy Spirit flows, what he does in this space, you know, I'm forever thankful for. Um, and I always say this, I'll say it again, you know, the way that you carry the heart of the Father, Matt, the way you carry his love and the tenderness of God is just ministers to my heart every time. So it's, uh, it is, it's truly, truly a blessing. So um, I know I say this a lot, but if there's anybody on that's like, who in the world is Matt Beckenham? Tell us a little bit in like two minutes about who you are. Sure. So, yep, my name is Matt. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Trish. I've um, been married just on 31 years and uh, three adult children. Uh, again, love them to bits. Um, so what I do, um, I am a pastor of a local Baptist church in Sydney, Australia. Um, but my heart is very much for uh, helping people discover the voice of God so that they can know it, test it, trust it, and be so familiar with it that, you know, that concept of John 10, that when my sheep recognize my voice, that's a reality. That's not just a, a hope or a fairy tale. That is a reality. And so when you're hearing the Father, you're knowing who the Father and you're responding to his voice. So I do a thing called prophetic mentoring where I just, it's a short course of five weeks. It just allows people into the place of hearing him through the word of God, uh, through dreams, visions, creation, and their imagination. 
And it's just about, <clears throat> excuse me, if you can test, if you can hear his voice, you can test it in what, any one of those other ways. And again, in the testing comes the truth. And so, yeah, so for me, that's part of my heart. It's just helping people not only hear, but test and trust and finally love. So, yeah, that's kind of me. Yeah, it's awesome. And, you know, guys, the way that Matt, um, you know, trains people and equips people is just stunning. Like I'm constantly um, speaking to people that have done prophetic mentoring with Matt and have just been so blessed and so awakened and so activated. Um, so you're going to get a little bit of that today on this broadcast. You'll just see the way that the beautiful way the Holy Spirit flows through him. Uh, Matt, as, as always, somebody has said in the comments that you only look 30. <laughs> Every <Thank you>. time. <laughs> yes. Every time we get on. I agree. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, let's dive in. So the reason um, why we are doing this broadcast is we really um, we really felt this was something that the Holy Spirit is wanting to bring encouragement to people around uh, right now. We did, um, well, Matt and myself and Kevin and our group of students for our online school called Ablaze Australia uh, for the Australians. We um, did a session on, when was it, Matt? Monday? Yeah, oh, mon Monday night, yep. Yeah, <laughs> on Monday night, on the wilderness. It was actually, it was titled The Beauty of the Wilderness. And it, like, the way that we saw the Holy Spirit move was just stunning. Like, absolutely stunning. The encounters that students were having, uh, the fruit that has come from uh, though that session um, afterwards has just been beautiful and so as Matt and I were kind of discussing uh, this Facebook live um, we really felt to dive into this topic uh, this will be we're just going to flow with the Holy Spirit so this isn't going to be um, the ablaze Australia outline this is just we feel the Holy Spirit is really uh, wanting to encourage people around what what it, what's the wilderness and let's talk about it um, and mm. uh, and just really bring life to you and encouragement so Let's get ready to dive in. So, Matt, do you want to just start sharing a little bit, like, what's on your heart around this kind, of, this topic of the beauty of the wilderness? Yeah, there's a. I think the word wilderness is one of those words that are circling the world right now in prophetic culture in churches, and often when things happen in our world of a global nature, uh, you often find that we have these words that sort of seem to to come to the surface, and we start navigating them from a place of well, that's what I perceive it to be. That's what it could be. Other people have used this word and therefore I'm going to take that word. And so for me, it's about, and the way that I work is I love to unpack words to discover what they actually mean. Yeah. And so this co concept of wilderness has been coupled with another word that the Father's really laid on my heart of curious. And I know that's a strange word, but the word curious, uh, for me, I find that word popping up all the time. And the curiosity in the kingdom of God to discover, to learn and to grow is so exciting for this moment right now. And now it's not to, um, to lessen anything that's happening in the world right now, but it's to discover that the Father is doing something that's birthing something within. And this concept of the wilderness, and when you titled it the beauty of the wilderness, I thought this was the like the best concept ever because it takes something that most people uh, decide is quite difficult and challenging mm -hmm. and putting it a word on it that we wouldn't normally associate with the word wilderness mm -hmm. and so for myself it's to discover the beauty of what is discovered when we are journeying through our wilderness moments and one of the things i get people to do all the time when i'm sitting with them if they say hey i'm going through a wilderness season right now i go well what's that mean to you like what does that look like? What does that feel like? And what I often find is people define their wilderness experience by their circumstances, mm. but not from where the Father has led them. Yeah. Now, I think scripturally and biblically, historically, and even my own experience, uh, if I define my world by my circumstances rather than what the Spirit is doing, I'm always ending up in my circumstances and often complaining about them, often wondering about them. But when I find what, Father, are you doing? Where are you leading? How are you doing something in this side of this this time? 
it changes my orientation. And so for me, I love how, Lana, you change the vocabulary to allow the word beautiful to describe something that might be inherently difficult and challenging, mm -hmm. but you're actually looking for the glory inside of those moments, which I think is Romans 8, 28, all mm -hmm. things work for glory for those who love the Lord and called according to his purposes. It's just like it's taking a moment like that and they go, okay, let's just discover some of the beauty inside of this moment. Yeah, and I, I absolutely love that you started on that point because many years ago, and I was saying this to Kevin the other night, you know, let's rewind 12 years ago, maybe even 13 years ago, if you had have said the word wilderness to me, like I never would have put the word beauty in the same sentence as the wilderness. I would have put things like pain, <laughs> pruning, you know, brokenness, like all of those really intense kind of, you know, adjectives. But, um, but over the years, I have learnt that in my wilderness times, in those moments, I have found Jesus and I have found his voice and I have found his nature in a way that I haven't in, in any other place. Like there is a depth to my relationship with the Lord that has really been forged in some of the uh, wilderness times in my life. Um, and so now I look at the wilderness, like you're saying, Matt, and I, I look and I look for, you know, what is, what's he doing? Like mm. what, what is happening in the wilderness? And one of my favorite scriptures, which I'll talk about towards the end, but one of my favorite scriptures is, is in the Song of Songs, you know, and at the end it says, who is this coming up out of the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? You know, and I just, I think that that's just, it's such a beautiful place to recognize that, yes, the wilderness, it can be difficult, it can be painful, but what is God doing uh, in the middle of the wilderness? You know, how am I seeing this place? And, and I'm looking for him in the middle of the wilderness. I'm looking for like, I'm looking for Jesus. I'm intentionally looking for him rather than, you know, looking for the hard ground or looking at the things that are around me. And I want to say this and I'll hand back to you, Matt, but one thing that I always thought and the Lord had to break this out of me was that I thought the wilderness was punishment. I always equated wilderness with punishment. If God takes me out into the wilderness, then I've done something wrong. But look at the life of Jesus, right? Which I'm sure we will talk about. You know, Jesus was led into the wilderness. Jesus didn't do anything wrong. But out of my own um, wrong thinking, out of, you know, lies I believed in my heart, things I believed about my identity that weren't right, I had reframed the wilderness to be somewhere God takes you to punish you. But over the years, the Lord has actually brought me to this place where I understand that, yes, the wilderness is such, it can be a really difficult place, but it's a place of transformation. It's a place where I find my, my dependence and my trust in Him in a way that is so fortified within me that I come up out of the wilderness stronger and, and with a, a strength in Him that can't be taken from me. Yeah, I, I think that's, I, yeah, I, I can hear my head ringing around the concept that that's so much in the Bible. I was thinking of John the Baptist and him being found in the wilderness and what did people go out there to see? Well, for some people, he looked like some crazy guy that mm -hmm. eats locusts and, and all kinds of things, but what they discovered was a move of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. People were repenting, like, uh, and again, John's baptism was all around sin, and so people were coming back from that place, but they had to go. They had to leave. They had to get away from Jerusalem to meet John out there out in the wilderness. But that's where it seems as though fa the Father um, draws us out of our places into areas where, yeah, maybe we're stepping out from the boat. Maybe we're stepping into places we've never been before, but he's doing it to bring us to a place of relationship, which I think is the Exodus story as well, separates them from Egypt. And like some of them complained about what they had back there. And if we had, if we stayed there, we could have had meals. If we stayed there and the father's like, yeah, but if you stay here, you have me. If you stay here, the provision will flow from the heavens. If you stay here, we'll create a nation out of the very people who choose to separate themselves from those kinds of thoughts and thinkings or the slavery, the things that have held us back. And so it for me, it takes on this world of its own, that there's new life when we actually change our orientation. Because like you, Lana, I think I grew up in the church and that was my 
teaching. That was what I believed for. That's what I, I thought. And again, and God is a punishing God. And then it wasn't until years later when I went through my own wilderness thing, if I can put that in inverted commas, that I thought was diabolical and some of it was so tough. But in through it, the Father was just showing his faithfulness time and time again. And the phrase he kept saying to me, if you are willing, you will see me. If you are willing. And there were some days, Lana, I did not want to wake up. I didn't want to open my eyes. It was just such a painful time. But there's the Father. If you are willing. If you are willing. And it's this beautiful place of invitation, which I think so much again is of Exodus, the invitation to Sinai, to discover the God above and to see his works and to see his hands. I just think there's so rich around the language that you're using. And I, I just really believe that it's moments like this for you and I, where we're speaking words of life from a different orientation than maybe what we've ever seen before, or what I've seen before. Let me just phrase it that way. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's, that's so powerful. Like, and it's, that's such a powerful um, truth and it's such a powerful revelation. You know, I often think of um, the scripture, I was just looking for it. I think it's in Hosea um, that it says, I will lure her into the wilderness and I will speak to her. And that, you know, that scripture and also in a conversation I had um, quite a number of years ago with Brian Simmons, the, the passion translator, mm -hmm. and he said to me, Lana, you know, the wilderness is a place, you know, where God speaks. And I was yeah. like, what? <laughs> Hang on. In one sentence, you've just re you've changed my life. Like you've reframed my my perspective of the wilderness place and I, I just I think that you know if we look at that and like you said like if we're we're looking for him and those pla and recognizing you know the wilderness is very much a place where where God will he will purify he will you know he'll prune he'll build those faith muscles and he will deliver us from those um, those mindsets and those views that keep us in in the place of bondage that keeps in that place of of oppression and you know it's so interesting I was uh, saying to Kev the other night who would have thought that you know so many years later like I had a, a quite an intense wilderness experience even I think four four years ago now but I I can actually say that in the wilderness place like I thought I was dying. Like I literally thought I'm not going to make it through this. Like this is so intense. I'm dying. Yet I came out the other side and I look back at that, that wilderness time and other ones in my life. And even though it's not discounting how difficult they were, but somehow by the, the work of the Holy Spirit and, and hearing his voice and encountering the Lord in that place, I actually came to life. Like they are actually moments now where I look back and I go, wow, in those dark places, in those places where I felt alone, in those places where it felt really dry, somehow by his spirit, he moved and he worked on my heart and I encountered him and I, I came to a deeper level of intimacy and revelation of who he is, that they've actually been markers in my life now where I have been transformed and come to life. And that, like, isn't that just like God? Like, <laughs> you know, it just blows my mind. Yeah. And even listening to you say that, Lana, you can hear the freedom in your voice. Mm -hmm. It's like, as you speak it, you're hearing it. And I think there's a thing in churches at times where we negate our feelings, or if it's a bad feeling, we think it's evil. If it's a good feeling, we think it's God. But sometimes we have to process those feelings to get us to a place of understanding. Uh, like I'm sure Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was not processing really great feelings yeah. as he was praying, right? I mean, like his heart must have been literally broken in half right there. And I feel the emotion of that moment just thinking about it. But again, in that place, as he feels, he engages with the Father. It's not ignoring it. It's engaging with it. The Israelites were the same. They were hungry. They felt it. And therefore, they decided, well, they decided to complain about it rather than pray about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe there's a little thing in there too. Yeah. <laughs> but so often we get told to ignore our feelings, but we've been created with them. And again, for me, in these journeys of with people through wilderness moments is how does that feel for you? 
Okay, let's just unpack that as a message. Let's understand that. Let's see where that feeling is actually flowing from. Is this something from a belief system that's gone a bit astray, like with me? Like I think God's, like you said, taking me to punish me. Okay, let's just speak about that concept of guilt or shame that's actually come into your life. They're real feelings. And allowing the Father to minister to those areas, um, that's healing right there. But it's not by ignoring the feelings. And then when you hear yourself talk, Lana, the joy that's in your life of the discovery, it reminds me of, um, was it Jacob that would build those rock stone altars as those memorials of God was here. (laughs) And any time we go back here, God God was here. And I, I wonder how much of our lives, but everyone listening here, if we had those moments, maybe all over the world, there would be little rock monuments. God was here. And as we continue to walk through these times to encounter him, maybe we might run out of rocks or something. I don't know. I'm just joking with that sort of stuff. But it's just, again, these beautiful memorial moments of God was here. And as people come across that, they can come into the revelation that God is here. Mm. And I think that's part of this journey of wilderness. Not we're going somewhere to find God. We're going somewhere with God. And going somewhere with God is regardless of the circumstances that surround us. Yeah, oh, I have to jump on that, Matt, because that what, when you said, um, you know, the wilderness places can be, you know, the places where we look and we say God was here. Um, I just I really feel to share this because it was such a powerful moment for me uh, with Jesus. But the Lord took me into the wilderness a couple of years ago and he began to bring things up in my life, in my heart uh, that needed healing. And he began to bring forth you know, really painful memories and different things. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, like this is really intense. Like, and, and one day I remember in particular, it just, this wilderness time, it was so dry. I felt really alone. You know, I felt like God was a thousand miles away. And in the middle of this wilderness time on this particular day, this memory kept coming up in my, in my mind and I would push it down and I'm like, oh, what is that? I don't want to think about that. And I eventually, after a couple of hours of it nagging at me, realized that it was obviously the Lord saying, hey, I, I want to invite you into something. So I sat mm-hmm. down and I said to the Lord, you know, Lord, what, what are you saying? Are you saying something right now? And all of a sudden, I go into this vision. And in this vision, Jesus takes me back into this memory. Now, let me tell you, it was painful. Like, it was not easy. It was painful. But the Lord said to me in that moment, he said, Lana, he said, I've pulled you aside right now. He said, because I see that these areas in your life have brought condemnation. These, these, um, these memories have brought shame and different things and I'm coming and I wanna heal you. And in this mi- the middle of like this really broken place, like really dark place, Jesus met me and he spoke to me and the words out of his mouth brought healing to me. And when I, the, the encounter was done, the end of the encounter, Jesus grabbed my hand and he pulled me, like, no, like gently led me out of the room and he closed the door. And when he closed the door, written in red, it said, Jesus was here with a big <laughs> circle around this word. And it was intense this time, like this wilderness time was intense. But mm. that was a moment within that, that, um, that wilderness time that became a, a place of remembrance for me. Now I look back at that and I go, that season was so difficult, but I have, like you said, Matt, those stones set up now where I'm like, wow, but even on the days where he felt a thousand miles away, even on the days where I was, um, I was confronted with my own, the stuff that was going on in my heart, the areas of pain, all of those things, that God showed up, Jesus showed mm. up and he healed me and he delivered me. And now there's a stamp over that door that says Jesus was here. It's just beautiful. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's so much inside of that, uh, Lana, that again, when you see and you hear Jesus doing that for you, it's again him placing his hand of healing on those parts of your life. Mm. And the fact that you can talk about them now shows the healing and transformation you've walked into so that we get to partner with that. Mm. And that's power. See, at the time when you're in them, 
like you're just about prophesy anything, wouldn't you, to try and get out of those sorts of things, <laughs> trying to get out of it. And I, I, like I'm, I was the same, and I think, wow, some of the things I was speaking out back then, I just, I just didn't know what I was saying. But in the midst of it, Jesus met me in my time where, like you, um, it's it was, it was just like each day was so hard, and mm. it felt like life was being sucked away. And I heard the Father say, "I forgive you." And then he said, if you're willing, I can help you. Wow. And, and it's these words that you hold on to years later. Mm -hmm. You know the power of them. You see the power of them. You can feel the power of them. That's why when you and I talk, often that woman with the, the perfume breaks open on Jesus' feet, that story often comes up when we talk because that story yes. for me is so relevant for mm -hmm. the one who has been forgiven much will love much. And I think in the season that we're in of discovering the, the grace of God's forgiveness and restor restorative love of how much love can flow from the bride of Christ, how much love can flow out of these times of wilderness where we are searching for him in earnest, where we're, we're wanting that encounter with him and we're desiring for it. And so when I hear you say that, it's just this beautiful memory of God just putting his hand on that and just going, you know what, I healed you. There's probably more revelation that's going to flow from that, but this is how God works. He gives us revelation in the very things that we overcome so that when other people are going through those things, we can speak that revelation of the Father into them and they can discover something of the Father's heart that we have discovered. For me, this is the kingdom and the good news flowing out through his people. And that's why I think the wilderness times, they need to be understood and walked through and not avoided. Yeah, that's really beautiful. And I love that because isn't it just like the heart of God? You know, you said um, they're the places where we overcome. So, so if you can look at it this way, you know, we're in our wilderness time and, you know, it's hard and, and there's a battle and, you know, there's, it's, it's really difficult. Like, you know, Matt, when you were saying before that some days it was just hard to open your eyes and get out of bed. I totally, I get that. Like, you know, that place of like, you feel like life is being sucked out of you. But in that place, when you encounter the Lord and he brings that healing and he brings deliverance and freedom, you know, not only is that for you, but that is then so you can minister to others that were in that, that are in that same place. And I just I it always um, blows my mind how big God's perspective is, you know, like he's not only you know, in your moment of wilderness, is he, you know, um, moving in your life, but he can see, you know, the 10, 50, 100, 1000 people that are going to be healed and set free and delivered uh, through your testimony of how he showed up in that time of hardship and, and you know, that dry wilderness time uh, for you. And it just it always just blows my mind, the love of God, you know, and how big his heart is. Like he's yeah. just, he's such a, a glorious father. Um, but one thing I want to just jump on, it, it's been bugging me uh, for the last minute or so, but I, I kept hearing these words, you know, the wilderness is a place of encounter, but wilderness I believe is also a place of, of preparation. It's also a place where, you know, God will really deal with these areas, um, to really prepare you um, to carry the new things that he has for you, the new assignments, you know, whatever it may be. And part of that preparation, I think, is in the in the wilderness. Um, I think God God's heart is for many things, but I think one thing is he wants us to see, you know, who we are in him. You know, he wants us to see our identity. And, you know, for me, if you've ever heard my story, like one of my wilderness times was God stripped away all ministry. He stripped everything from me. You know, he said to me, Lana, who are you without those things? And I didn't realize that as a, you know, I think I was 21 at the time or 22, that I had begun to take, you know, title and ministry to as part of who I was. This is who I am. Why? Because there was this, this area of brokenness in my heart and my soul. And the wilderness became a place where I remember Jesus looking at me in a vision. He said to me, who are you without all this stuff? And when he asked me that question, my mind said, oh, I, I, I'm a child of God. I'm a daughter of the King. I'm forgiven. I'm righteous. And you know, I have the righteousness of Christ. And yet my heart was screaming a totally different story. 
in my heart, if I had quieted my mind and actually listened to my heart, my heart would have gone, yeah, actually, I don't know. And so then questions for me, when I would sit with the Lord and he would say to me, ask me what I think of you, Lana. That was one of the hardest questions for me on the planet to ask the Lord. Mm. I could ask the Lord, what are you doing in Matt's life? You know, what are you doing in the body of Christ? Lord, what are you doing in Australia? God, what are you doing in the nations? And I have no issue at all with hearing what God is going to say. But when the Lord said to me, ask me what I think about you, I wanted to run and hide under a table. That was the scariest question for me. But God took me into, he, he pulled me away into this wilderness place because he knew, right? He knew. And slowly, layer by layer, he began to love me back to life. And he began to love me back to this place of identity where now I can approach the Lord and say, God, tell me, you know, what do you think of me today? And he will speak words of love and he will like so many times my journal is full of what looks like this beautiful letter from the, the father to me affirming who I am and, and, and speaking of his delight in me. And so I really just wanted to share that because I feel like there's some of you that uh, could be watching right now and you feel like uh, when you heard me say that, you know, that that word of asking the father what do you think of me? You know, how do you see me, Lord? That that brings up this, oh, oh, I really don't want, I really don't want to do that. Like that's actually a really scary place for me. Well, I want to encourage you that I, I actually saw the Lord pulling you aside in this hour and, and loving you back to life. That the Lord actually is bringing you into this beautiful place where his words and your encounters with Jesus are going to break off those lies about your identity. They're going to, uh, you're going to be healed from areas of pain and shame and condemnation. Um, and that the Lord is really going to speak those words that are going to heal your heart. Yeah, Lana, that's, that's very much been once on my heart as well. Because I think one of the things that the wilderness gives to us is our identity. Yeah. Like, when the Israelites, I guess before they were the Israelites, they were there in Egypt. Who were they? Well, they were a people who wanted to be rescued. Yeah. But the father's like, yeah, I'm going to do more than that. Yeah. And it's a people marked by his name. And Israel is God fights for. And uh, again, it's God draws them into a place to give them a name. And as you have been given a name, and like there's, a, there's an activation I love to do with people, Lano, where... It comes out of Revelation 2, 17, where it talks about the white stone. I don't know if you and I have done that before. Yeah, we have, yeah. yeah we have, yeah. yeah. And it's allowing that name to be seen and known. Did you, yeah. did you what is your name? Do you have a name that's on the I white do. stone? I do. Are you willing, are you willing to share it? Is it? Are we getting too risky right now? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I would. <laughs> yeah. It's this beautiful thing that what the, the Word of God says, that's between you and Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And I know when I did this myself, I, I really struggled with the concept too because as an Australian, to give yourself a name, often mm -hmm. people will try and cut your legs out from under you or they go, nah, yeah. that's not who you are. And I really struggled with that concept. Uh, in the last few years when I started pressing into that and leaning into that, I had a lot of people talking to me about the love of God that flows from me. Mm -hmm. And it's just like... God, are you serious? Like, is that who I am? And it's, again, to, to talk about that in a, a forum like that, for me, is quite strange. But, again, the Father's like, I'm marking you. I'm speaking over you. And I'm allowing my voice to be known through you in this particular way. And, Silana, when I see you, purity is the word that always comes to mind. Always. It's yeah. such a strength of your character. It's such a strength of your voice. It's such a strength just the way you lead your life as well. And, and again, it's such a beautiful thing to see. And so in the wilderness, these sorts of names get spoken and encouraged and brought forward. And the Israelites had to ask themselves the question, is this how I want to be known? Is this who I really am? And so often that they go for less. So they'd look for a golden calf rather than the golden voice of God that flowed from the top of Sinai. And they'd look for other, like they'd look for a king rather than God. And they'd always go for less. And I think in times in our world, in our culture, we yeah. seem to want to do the same. But the Father leads us to this place to help us encounter him and to discover 
discover not only our identity, but then therefore uh, the way that he sees us in fullness and so that we can walk from that place then in, in assurance and authority. Yeah, and I think that's really powerful. And I know, um, you know, when I've done activations with you in the past and I've had my own encounters with the Lord and, um, and he said to me, you know, when I was 18, I think it was, was the first time I had uh, this encounter with the Lord and he said to me, this is this is what I call you and I was yeah. like oh my gosh like and it was totally different to anything that I had ever thought about myself um, yeah. and that's now like it's this special place um, that I have with the Lord where you know I really um, I feel his delight you know and I feel his heart and, and even the Lord speaking that, you know, brought healing and it brought deliverance and it brought freedom. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's really a beautiful place. And it's a place where we fight. And like you said, we operate out of our authority, you know, our identity. Like it, it's just, it's so important. Um, but I want to just ask Matt, there's been quite a number of comments when you mentioned that people went, oh, hang on a sec. What were you referring to? Do you want to just explain it again uh, just for those yep. that missed it? So the Revelation 2.17, is that it? Yeah, they were saying, uh, what saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah, what name are you referring to? And, and um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So in Revelation 2.17, Jesus is talking to one of the churches and he says to those who overcome, I will give to you uh, spiritual manna from heaven, but he also gives to you a white stone. And on that white stone is a new name that you and Jesus understand. And, and I love the terminology in that too, because it speaks that I do understand it where for so often as Christians, we're not taught or how to understand it. And so when I speak to Christians and I ask them about their identity, they'll say, hey, I'm a child of God. And I'm going, yeah, that's cool. That's excellent. Um, but I don't call my children child. I call them by their name. And then we sort of step into the next place and they say, well, I'm a son or I'm a daughter of God. And that's also very true. That's by your design. But what is your name? And there's something about people knowing your name and understanding your name through your character. You see, Lana, you've said the word delight that describes your heart twice now. It's again, it's speaking that word over yourself that you are a delight in the kingdom of heaven. And when you are present in conversation, you are delighting in the people that you're in conversation with. And so it's this beautiful thing that flows from you because you are an overcomer, you are victorious, and you are the one who receives the spiritual manner from heaven, which I think is God's revelation, and then the white stone. Mm, yeah, and you know, you just said something, Matt, that um, I was really feeling before, and um, when I said that word delight, and then you picked up on it just then, and, and, um, and I, I really want to say this right now, because I, I feel the heart of God for many of you um, right now that you know you may be in a place where you have been feeling like um, I, I've got to do a certain amount of things like I have to you know dot all my I's and cross all my T's and then then I'm a delight to the Lord like then you know he's well pleased okay yes there's a place that you know we have to steward well and you know and obedience all of that stuff but your identity you know, in Hebrews, it says that you can approach the throne boldly. And that doesn't say that you can do that based upon your own works, right? It doesn't say that because you've done everything right now, you can approach the throne. It's because of Jesus. It's because of the price that Jesus paid. He shed blood. He made a way for that place of, of reconciliation. And I, I really feel like, I know I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. I, I really strongly feel like, the Lord is going to uh, really lead some of you into some deep encounters of what does it look like for you to approach the throne? How do you approach the throne? You know, if Jesus was to stand in your room right now, wherever you are, you know, how do you imagine the look on his face to be? Like, how is he looking at you? How do you approach him? Because what I actually saw was I had this picture and I saw... Um, little children and I saw a little girl with like a little ballerina type dress and then I saw a, um, 
a little boy and they just ran to the throne like absolutely rap there was no hesitation if oh my goodness like I'm scared it was absolute running in joy to the throne because of their, the, the, the delight of their father for them so I, I really feel like right now like yes we're in a season where God is restoring the fear of the Lord and all of those things absolutely but I feel like some of you have been so caged in this place of feeling like you know what when I approach the throne I actually see myself like I'm I'm groveling like I'm actually you know or, or actually not even approaching the throne at all like I, I feel like this fear come over me when I think about um, approaching the Lord and I keep going back to that um, scripture in the Song of Songs and it says that um, and he peers into the places where I hide he peers in, my beloved pierces, his eyes pierce. He looks into my soul, even into the places where I hide. And part of my wilderness journey and experience was God bringing me out of those places within my heart where I hide. The wilderness has been a place of encounter. It's been a place of God developing my character, strengthening my faith, strengthening my dependence, but also my beloved calling out, calling my, my, my heart out of those places where I hide and into a place of wholeness and into a place of the revelation that, hang on a sec, he delights in me, not because of what I do. He delights in me because of who I am. I am his. Yeah. And that, I believe, right now, <laughs> is a word for some of you that, that the Lord really wants to minister to you and really break off things that have hindered that revelation in your life. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great word, Lana, because I think for so many of us at times we grow up in these places where it's even often the church will speak those things over us that bind us into those places. And in this season where I... Uh, where I do believe that we've been drawn into this wilderness to separate ourselves, to come under the power of the Spirit of God, to hear his voice again. And it's not like Samuel in those days where the Bible says that God didn't speak very much and there weren't very many dreams and visions. This is a day where dreams and visions are actually coming back in force. Yeah. Yeah. And as believers in Christ, we should be engaging and listening and learning and testing and growing in all of these aspects. And so when we're in a company of people that are doing that, we're actually learning and growing and doing this stuff together. I think the Israelites were called out of Egypt as a community together to discover and to see, to have the Father revealed to them. When you fast forward to the New Testament and in the book of Luke where it says that Jesus went and prayed often in the wilderness, how often then do you find the disciples going and tracking him down? <laughs> Like they're drawn out to the wilderness too to go, Jesus, where have you gone? We want to hang out with you. What's he doing? He's going out. He's out there to encounter the Father. They're going out there as well. Think about Peter, James, and John when Jesus said, how about we go climb a high mountain today? That's got to be in the wilderness. I've actually seen that mountain myself. It's in the wilderness. And so for them to climb up there, and the Bible says in one verse it's a high mountain. I can't even imagine how long it took them to get there. But by the time they got there, they saw this moment of encounter and revelation that the Bible says they didn't even have words to wrap around that. So when they came back down, they didn't talk about this till a long time later. And, and so in these moments of being drawn by the Spirit into the wilderness, it allows them to know that there is an encounter that is coming. And I think for a lot of you people, people who might be listening and you might be in that place of just going, I'm just about to give up. I, I don't know where this encounter is. Maybe for Lana and I, we are part of that encounter for you today. Maybe there's something in our words today that have brought something of the revelation into the, of the Father to you today to restore hope. And remember, hope is one of those eternal qualities that's mm. going to be here forever. And so, again, if you're feeling hopeless, just understand there's, there's, a, there's a lie that's been seeded there. And we want to stand with you today and pray for you that as mm. Jesus comes alongside of you, that he might touch those dry and wounded places like he did with Lana and right over them, Jesus was here. <laughs> <laughs> So good. It's a good picture, right? It sounds yeah. like graffiti. But yeah. <laughs> Jesus was here. Like, please, Jesus, graffiti my heart with that sort of stuff. Because, again, what is written on, upon, on our hearts, as the Bible says, his word. That's right. And so Jesus was here is his word written on your heart. I love that, Lana. Mm. 
Yeah, and oh, I just want to say this, and maybe um, we could pray for everyone, but I, I really, uh, when you said that, I heard these words, um, I'm changing the narrative. And I think that that is such a powerful statement of what happens when God speaks. You know, he changes the narrative. Jesus wants yeah. to bring... Um, his language and his word as the the seal upon some of the most painful and broken places of your heart and of your life and i really um i really find so much joy now when i look back at that that moment of encounter with the lord because what for many years was a place where the enemy had found a voice he had found a uh, found a voice in my life to bring a narrative of all of those things, you know, shame and, and, you know, pain and trauma and all of those things. And then in one encounter, one word out, like one statement out of the mouth of Jesus in the middle of that encounter, he reminded me of his word. He reminded me of who he was. It changed the narrative. So now when I look back on that, that memory, I am not plagued with the voice of the enemy. What I look back now and I go, that's one of the places where Jesus spoke to me. Like that is one of the moments in my life that testifies to the statement that I always say that, you know, one word out of his mouth changes everything. Like one word out of his mouth shifts the atmosphere. One word out of his mouth causes the mountains to tremble. You know, one word, like he spoke uh, and created the world as he spoke. It, it created and, it, and, it, um, and it, 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 it created this beautiful planet that we all live on. It created us. Like that place, I believe, is such a place of deep encounter that the Lord is wanting to awaken us to even more that no matter what the enemy has said, no matter what... The, the pain or trauma, and I'm not lessening those places of pain, but what I'm saying is that when he speaks, it just, it shifts everything. It, it changes the narrative. And so that's why I love the word of God. I love being in the mm -hmm. word and reading the word and feasting on the word because that, that place is, is shifting my, is changing narratives all the time in my life. And so, Matt, when you said, you know, there might be some people that are like, you know, I'm desperate for this encounter and I'm about to give up. Like, I, I want to encourage you, like, keep going into the word, you know, filling yourself with the word of the Lord, sitting and, and, and allowing the spirit of God to, to really minister his word and to, to write his word upon your heart. Um, because this is an hour, I believe, where God is is restoring wonder and awe of who he is and his beauty mm. and his majesty. And don't give up hope, you know, don't give up. The Lord has promised, you know, in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. Like, I just want to prophesy over you right now, those places of encounter where you hear the voice of the Lord and it changes everything and it breaks those narratives of the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can I, I just drop to, one word yeah, on that? I was going to say, yeah, please. Yeah, please. I think that narrative of the one word is so powerful too, because sometimes people go, oh, does, does it really work like that? Well, you know, I remember the very first time that my wife told me that she loved me. Mm. It completely rocked my world and it changed my world. Yeah. I can't tell you what shifted but everything shifted seemed to be in that time mm -hmm. years later when the phrase i forgive you came into it it changed my world yeah. it was there was restoration there was power inside of it and again the father has this way of speaking directly to the need yeah. and it's not just these superficial words that we go oh what on earth does that mean he's mm -hmm. speaking so directly yeah. to the, the heart and the soul and this, I think, Lana, is part of the generation that we're in. It's like the children of Israel. When they got drawn out of Egypt, they had to learn to listen for God. Mm. They just didn't know how. And like they, they, they weren't aware. Or the, And I think for so many believers on the planet right now, we are looking to all different kinds of people to hear God. And God's like, yeah, I'm speaking to them. Mm. But I'm also speaking those words to you. Yeah. And allowing ourselves to slow down to hear allows us into a process where we can discover that his words are creation. Mm. And so when he says, I love you to you, 
He is creating an atmosphere of love that drives fear away. What did the Israelites need out there in the wilderness? Fear to be driven away. Mm. What did Jesus do when he led his disciples up a high mountain? They didn't know what to do when Moses and Elijah turned up, but what he did was drove fear away. Mm. Every believer watching this carries the love of God within them, and you have the power and the authority to release it. And allowing that love to flow through you will change uh, your communities, it will change your families. But it's allowing the process also to begin and to flow. So where I was 31 years ago when I asked Trish to marry me is far different place to where we are in relationship today. And if I expected everything to happen 31 years ago, my mind probably would have just literally melted on the spot. But it's again, it's this process of revelation that's drawn me into a place of transformation. And I, I love it. I absolutely love it. And so I think what you're saying with the words one words is just going yes lord and we've got to reject that phrase is this good to too good to be true yes i actually think that's a demonic phrase mm. uh, because so often we hear in the kingdom oh no that's too good to be true or that sounds like mm. a fairy tale and as soon as we start entertaining that conversation there's a talking snake in the room that needs to be mm. trod on and not engaged with and so it's allowing this sort of conversation to happen to us as we're walking through times that we perceive to be dry difficult where we're not actually feeling that we're engaging with the Father's heart. Mm. I want to say spiritually, I reckon you're probably engaging with him more than you know. And yeah. these are the season where that sort of revelation, I'm praying will flow for each of us as well. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I want to say that again, um, just so for those of you, I know Matt just said it, but I really felt like when you said that, Matt, I was like, wow, I felt such a weight on that. You know, that's that phrase, you know, it's too good to be true. Like what Matt, you said, Matt, don't entertain that. Uh, like that, I feel like is, that's a word for somebody. You know, really don't entertain that, that, that place of it's too good to be true. You know, and I, I understand the place of feeling when you've been through trauma and pain and different things that you have that, that feeling inside of you of, oh my gosh, when's the rug going to be pulled out from underneath me again? Um, and I just, yeah, I, I really felt when you said that, Matt, that there was an invitation uh, from the Holy Spirit uh, to those that really are, are, are struggling with that concept to, um, to really come up. I, I saw people going up to a higher place and, and I saw the, the reassurance of the Father. I saw this beautiful place of, of just encounter with who he is and with his heart. Um, but I'm, I'm with you, Matt. I really, um, I used to say that phrase all the time in my heart because I was so afraid that, you know, like if, if, is this too good to be true? Like when's it going to be taken away or when's it going to, the rug going to be pulled mm -hmm. out? And I lived in such an inner turmoil all the time uh, because of that. But the more that I encountered his heart, the more I encountered his nature, the more he would speak to me. It, it, it's I, I'm just dreaming bigger and bigger and bigger, right? I'm like, he's yeah. the God of Ephesians 3.20. Um, so yeah. I, I just, oh, I was going to say let's pray, but I, I just, I feel like I need to share this and then um, we can pray. But I had a dream a couple of weeks ago and I've said this on a few uh, broadcasts lately, but it's really, um, really heavy on my heart right now in a glorious way. Um, but I had a dream uh, two, two or so, I haven't got my journal here, two or so weeks ago. Anyway, but the, the voice of the Lord was so loud in my dream, like so loud as I slept. And he said, meditate on what it would have been like for Mary to sit at my feet. And he kept repeating it over and over again. And as I was just about to wake, I saw, I went into this like scene of a dream. So while he's speaking that I couldn't see anything, but then as I was waking, or about to wake, I go into this scene and I see Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and she's looking up at him and I can't even, I wish I had English words to describe the depth of what I encountered, but I saw her eyes that sparkled with, with life and her eyes were just like, like just so in awe of who he was. 
And as I have pondered that, because I woke up and I'm like, wow, I, feel, I, think, I really feel like this is a word for the body of Christ right now. There's so much mm. noise and there's so much going on in the world that it could, it's so easy to get distracted and overwhelmed. But coming back to this place of, of what would it have been like for Mary to sit at his feet, right? Like Jesus said, mm. she chose uh, the better thing. She chose the thing that cannot be removed from her. It can't be taken from her. And I, as we pray today, um, that will be part of my prayer for you. Because as we talk about this place of wilderness and we talk about, you know, these places that, you know, have often been very difficult for many, um, I just, I want to pray that you come into deeper encounters with Jesus and just sitting at his feet in that place of rest, that place of awe and wonder of who he is and, uh, and listening to his voice. So you got anything else you want to share, Matt, before we pray? I just don't want to cut uh, off. No, I just, I just agree. I want to affirm what you're saying too. It's, awesome. I feel this season is such an invitation to wait and to listen as well. And I think that yeah. it taps so strongly in your conversation of divine reboot or sila. Mm -hmm. I just don't see that that time has finished yet. I just see that the Father is still just drawing us to the feet of Christ to listen and to know whatever whatever he gives will never be taken. Mm. That's affirmation right there. Yeah, amen. Absolutely. Well, um, Matt, do you want to um, start, like, um, open us up in prayer and then I'll, I'll close? Sure. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> And if anyone's watched, you guys know that the way we pray, it's not just head down, dear Lord Jesus, and away we go. It's, mm. it's I'm wanting you, to, you guys to use your imaginations in this. And again, we call this an activation in the world that we live in. What an activation is, is purely using your imagination, possibly in a, a picture form, maybe in a word form, but creating a, a vision in front of you. And so the prayer that I'd like to ask you and invite you into is to pray and ask God to give you a picture of you standing in your wilderness. Mm. Whatever that looks like and whatever that means. It's your imagination. Let it paint the picture exactly the way that you are. Mm. Feel the ground beneath your feet. Feel the weather. Is it hot? Is it cold? Are you in a forest or are you in a desert? Allowing that moment of your imagination to build. And so again, we're using our imagination in prayer. We're creating a conversation with the Father. So we're inviting him into this conversation now. And so in your imagination, I want you to invite Jesus to walk into this place and let the conversation begin. So if you feel like you're in a dry desert, arid, even if you're alone, I want you to invite Jesus in for him to reach out and touch you. I really sense for some of you that he wants you to lift your head to see him. Look into his eyes. When you look, you will not see anger. You will not see discipline or punishment. You're about to see the eyes of your saviour. The same eyes that just allow everything of, sh of shame and guilt to disappear. Allow Jesus to minister to you today. Let this be our prayer. Then into this dry and arid time, if it, that is if you, I just want you to invite Jesus to reach down and touch the ground. And as Jesus touches the ground, Allow the transformation that he brings into this prayer to start happening around you. For some of you, you might see the trees come from the ground or water. For some of you, you might see other people start surrounding you. The phrase that I continually hear this day throughout the church is I'm looking for my people. I'm searching for my people. Well, this is a time that the Father drawing you or maybe away from where you have been to discover your people. Allow the vision to grow. Look at the plants that are growing. Look at the people that it might be surrounding you. Allow Jesus to do the, to do the heavy lifting, do the work, do the transformation. 
all the while there are you in the midst of that and in this conversation that appears in a vision jesus is bringing restoration transformation renewal of your heart and your mind he's restoring hope maybe he's growing faith but today i feel like he is releasing love and purity over you and so father we say thank you for this moment of time in jesus name Amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, we love you and we bless you. Holy Spirit, I thank you what you ha- for what you have done in this broadcast today. Lord, I thank you for each person that has joined. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to minister to them. Lord, I pray that in the, the, the wilderness places that, you know, I saw many have said that they are in. Lord, I pray that in that place, Lord God, that they would encounter you in a deep way. Lord, may they encounter you in a way that is so deep, Lord God, that they will come up out of the wilderness, leaning on their beloved. Lord, empowered and strengthened, fortified, refined, Lord God, and healed. Jesus, I pray a blessing over each one today. And Lord, I pray that these deep encounters with you, Lord, that they would have those moments, Lord, where they would hear your voice so clearly, Lord, that as you speak, Lord, that everything shifts. Lord, I pray for those encounters Mm. for each one today. Lord, I thank you that you are the God that, that changes the narrative. Lord, I thank you that you are silencing Lord, the voice of the enemy in many lives. I just see that there has been such accusation against many um, in your life. Some of you, it might be a couple of years. Others of you, it's been a really long time. But it's the same um, narrative that the enemy keeps speaking over and over and over again. And you can't, you just can't seem to silence this voice. But I, I really see right now that the, the Spirit of God is going into the area where the, the voice of the enemy has taken root and that the Lord is going to speak his truth. And not only is the voice of the enemy going to be silenced, but there is going to be a healing. There's going to be freedom and a deliverance from the stronghold that the enemy has built uh, within your heart. So, Lord, I thank you right now. I thank you, Lord, that you are the healer. I thank you that you are the deliverer. Lord, that you are God, the majestic one. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would continue the work of healing within the hearts of your people. And, Lord, that that you would take each one of us, Lord, throughout our days and throughout our lives, Lord, deeper into that place of understanding that there is beauty in the wilderness, Lord, the place where you speak, the place where we find you and we bless you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Matt. As always, such a, an amazing joy to just <laughs> do this with you. <laughs> it is. It's, yeah, it's just great listening to your heart and just, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know, it's just the revelation you bring into my spirit. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure into many others, it's just beautiful. So I just want to say thank you. Thanks, Matt. Same here. As I always say, I walk away from these broadcasts with you just so ministered to, my heart so full. Um, so, yeah, I know for myself and on behalf of everybody that I'm seeing in the comments, you know, we just honour you and we thank you for being on and just the way that you steward your heart and, uh, and your life with such purity and integrity and that deep place of intimacy and we all get to be you know partakers of what god is doing uh through you so such a joy Uh, now practically there were people on here that were like oh i don't know matt so how can people follow along with you matt yep sure so haberfield baptist church is the church that i run and so many of my teachings go up on its youtube uh, site or its facebook site so you can have a look at that um you can follow me on facebook uh, is there right? it is oh. Yep. oh i did it <gasps> you did it you got it i got it is that right you got it Good. And, and if anyone wants to do prophetic mentoring it's i might get someone to drop that email in the I chat bar but it's, it's prophetic it. you got it is that it there it is there it is oh my Beautiful. gosh guys celebrate with me i'm learning <laughs> <laughs> yep so yeah that would be awesome 
Awesome. Well, guys, um, for those of you, yeah, that said at the start of this broadcast, you know, oh, I don't know who Matt is. Um, there you go. There's some details that you can um, contact Matt and follow along with Matt. So we bless you guys. So good to um, be on with everybody. And uh, we hope that you have a wonderful uh, rest of the day. And uh, we look forward to being back with you guys again sometime soon. All right. Bless you. Bye. See ya.